Hello YouTube, this is Marcus or Garwin again with another video. This video is just going to be a little walkthrough of WPA2 Gen. It's the latest little project I've added to SourceForge. Like every project that I have put on SourceForge, this is literally just something simple that I wrote for myself uh, to make life easier. In this case, I actually wrote this several years ago and uh, I just went ahead and packaged it up to make it easier uh, because somebody had asked me to make it a little easier for people other than myself to just run it and go. So I've compiled it to a binary executable file for Windows as well as packaged it up into an installer. So uh, it's on SourceForge at slash projects slash WPA2Gen. Uh, and when you go there, there should be a green download button here that will automatically point you to the appropriate file for your operating system. So Windows users will get pointed to the EXE installer and everybody else, Unix, OS X, Linux, should get pointed to the tar.gz archive file. Now, if you want to download something other than what is automatically pointed here, you can actually just click the files link here, click on the folder for the current latest version, and download either one of those files here. And when you download them, let's say you download the tar.gz archive. Let's go here. This is the contents of that archive here. Now, on Windows, you will need something to extract that because it's not an, a zip file so it won't be handled by Windows's built-in archive manager so 7-zip uh, is what I use to make it so 7-zip would work just fine for extracting it and once you extract it here uh, there's just a handful of files this is just the bare bones uh, you know just the guts of the software you've got the changelog the GPL 3.0 license the readme the two icon files one PNG one is the Windows icon and this WPA2Gen.py, uh, the Python file, this is the program right here. And if you have Python 3 installed on your system, uh, in Windows you can just double click it, or in Unix you can run it with Python or Python 3 uh, space the file name uh, in the terminal here, and then it, it runs the program. But since Python files are literally just plain text executables you can also right click it and open it with your favorite text editor and actually just read the source code so even if you're using Windows if you don't want to run an exe from somebody you don't know if you'd rather download the plain text source code and look at it and then run it with Python itself you can certainly do that on Windows systems now if you download the Windows installer and run that it will create shortcuts in your start menu and on your desktop if you tell it to uh, so let's go ahead and run it once and show you how to use the software. So let's go ahead and click this icon here. And if you have Colorama installed, it will highlight the password that it generates in green so that it's a little easier to see. But if you don't, it's fine. It just won't highlight the uh, password. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. Now, when choosing the length of your password, remember that your password is not just a gatekeeping mechanism. It's also the encryption key for the traffic that gets transmitted on your network. So uh, people don't have to join your wireless network in order to capture packets from your network and then maybe get information like your, your banking password and things of that nature. So you want to have that uh, information protected as well as possible and a strong encryption key slash wireless password is a good way to do that so uh, the default is 63 characters I didn't do 64 characters because some devices that I have tried using 64 character passwords on didn't like it like I think our Nintendo Wii didn't like a 64 character password so I bumped it down to 63 so anyway the default is 63 characters if you really want to do a smaller one you just enter the number for whatever length you want to do. So let's do a medium length, the 20 character password here. And we hit enter. And then it shows you the password here. And then it asks you, if would you like to save the file on your desktop? So if you have multiple devices that you need to put this password into, you don't have to manual, you know, write this down and manually punch it in. It'll save it to the desktop here. So the default is no, but let's go ahead and say yes. And then it tells you where it saved the file and the file name. It's basically this and the timestamp. So let's go to our desktop here. We see a new text file with the password that it just generated for us. And this way we can copy this text file, say, onto a thumb drive and take it around to all the computers that need to connect and just copy and paste it. Uh, and so, and then we just exit the software 
and that's it. It's pretty straightforward. It's a straightforward, simple task, and a straightforward, simple tool for that task. Now, if you want to see the source code, but you've already downloaded and installed the uh, the Windows executable version, all you have to do is go to wherever you set it to install, and it installs to, I believe by default, Marx's WPA2 Gen, and you will find all of the Windows binary stuff, but you will also find the original Python source file in here. So all you got to do is, like before, open it with your text editor, and there is the source code for the software right there. So you don't have to download it twice if you want to use the installer, but also see the source code. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick caveat here on how to download and use the software if you're using Linux. You can see here we've got uh, the web page open in our Debian virtual machine, and it has automatically directed us to the tar.gz file. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Save file. We open the folder. We're going to right click it. We're going to hit extract here. And then you want to open the source folder here. Right click, open in terminal. And you should just be able to say dot forward slash wpa2gen.py. And we're just going to leave it at default 63 characters. You can see here that because I had installed Colorama, we do have uh, the password is highlighted in green, so it's a little easier to see. We're going to say yes, save the file to the desktop. The file has been saved as slash home me desktop. That, so let's go check and see if it is indeed. And there is the password that it just generated uh, for us. So, like I said, it is a... It's a very simple, straightforward tool for a very simple, straightforward task. And I hope you find it useful. Um, there are lots of websites and other tools out there that will do this sort of thing for you. This is just something that I wrote for myself. One, as an experiment in getting better at Python. And two, uh, so that I wasn't going through some third party who might be recording the password they give me. Uh, and maybe tying it to my IP address or other personal information. Uh, this is something that I created that runs locally on my machine and, and randomly generates a password for me. So there's no intermediary uh, between me and the password. So hopefully you guys find it useful in strengthening the security of your wireless networks. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, please either feel free to post them below this video or go to the SourceForge page and uh, check out the discussion area there, I believe. Uh, I need to sort of refine the project page here. I haven't got everything set up yet, but uh, you should be able to go to the discussion and create a topic in the forums and ask any questions or bring to light any problems you might have. So thank you, and as always, this is Garrowin out. Y'all have a good one.